xy coordinate plane, what is the area of the rectangle with opposite vertices at negative 3, 1, negative 1, and 3, and 1? The best way to solve this is to roughly draw the xy coordinate plane. And let's mark the points. Uh, let's, this is 3, this is negative 3, this is 1, this is negative 1. So the two points are negative 3, negative 1, and 3, and 1. Your rectangle would look kind of like this. The height will be 2 units. And you can see the width will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. According to, to find the area for rectangle, we usually multiply length by width. This will give you 12. And the answer will be 12. The following Venn diagram shows the ice cream flavor of 36 children at an ice cream party. Each child should choose between vanilla ice cream, chocolate ice cream, both or neither. What percent of the children had only chocolate ice cream? That's a term, only chocolate ice cream. Let's look at this diagram here. We see, uh, we can see here that the number of children who had only chocolate ice cream is nine. And the total number of children was 36. To find the percentage, we simply have to find divide the number of children who had chocolate, only chocolate ice cream by the number total number of children, which gives me 1 over 4, which is equal to 25%. And the correct answer is B, 25%. If four-fifths of a number is 24, what is one-fifth of the number? That's simple. Let the number be x. So four-fifths of x is equal to 24. Let's solve for x here. So let's multiply by 5 on both sides. Get rid of this 5. We get 4x is equal to 24 times 5, divide by 4 on both sides, and 4 goes here 6 times, x will be equal to 30. What is 1 fifth of x? So 1 fifth of 30 is equal to 6. Your answer is 6. The formula below is used in finance to compute A, the payment amount per period where P is the principal or loan amount and R is the interest and N is the total number of payments per period. So now A is equal to P is equal to this big formula. Now which of the following correctly gives P in terms of A and R? That means make P now the subject of this formula. All we have to do here now the denominator comes up here as the numerator when you bring it over. So now P is now your subject is equal to A times 1 plus R to the power of N minus 1 and that's over the numerator becomes a denominator which is the correct answer is B. A circle in the xy coordinate plane has a center of 2 and 5 and a radius of 3. Which of the following is an equation of the circle? Let's recall the equation of a circle. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where h is your center, x coordinate of your center, and k is the y coordinate of your center and r is your radius. All right, now they've given us the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle and we get x minus 2 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to radius 3 squared is 9. And we find this in a, so a is your correct answer.
In the figure above, A, B, C, and D is a square. And the points B and C and O lie in the graph Y is equal to X squared over K, where K is a constant. If the area of the square is 36, what is the value of K? Okay, if the area of the square is 36, that means each side is equal to 6. Uh, let's find the X and Y coordinates of point C. The value of X will be 3 here and the value of Y will be 6. That gives me X and Y value. Cool. Now Y is equal to 6 is equal to X squared over K, which is 3 squared over K. So K will be equal to 3 squared is 9 over 6, which cancels to 3 over 2, which is equal to 1. 0.5 and your answer is a 1.5. If the absolute value of 10 minus 3y is less than 3, which of the following is a possible value of y? Let's quickly plug in these values. Like, let's take the value of in a, which is 0. If y is equal to 0, the absolute value of 10 minus uh, 0, is it less than 3? No. Then b, let y be equal to 1. And let's see the absolute value of 10 minus 3 times 1 is 3. Is it less than 3? No, this is 7. Okay, then C, you plug in 2. 10 minus 3, 2 is 6. That gives me 4. Is it less than 3? No. And D, let's plug in 3. 10 minus 9, the absolute value of that will be 1. Is it less than 3? Yes, 1 is less than 3. So the answer is D, 3. If f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x and g of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 2, which of the following expressions is equivalent to f of x over g of x for x greater than 2? Factor each of these expressions separately first, all right? Let's factor f of x, which is equal to x is common. Take it out, so it will be x squared minus 4. When we get x and difference of two squares gives me x plus 2 and x minus 2. 2. That's f of x. And let's do g of x now is equal to these factors to x minus 1 and x plus 2. That's f of x over g of x is, we can see x plus 2 is common, cancel it out, and we are left with x into x minus 2 over x minus 1, and that's your answer, which is b. In the preceding figure, tick marks are equally spliced on the number line. What is the value of x? Right here, this is the value of x, all right? First, we see there's how many spaces? One, two, three, four, five. We have six spaces, and the difference between five and 47 is 42. So 42 divided by six will give me the length of each space, which is equal to seven. So basically, it's seven. You have to add seven to get every preceding number. So this will be 5 plus 7, which is 12, and 12 plus 7, which is 19. The value of x will be 19. So C is your correct answer. A and B are positive integers, and 2 to the power of 3a into 2 to the power of 3b is equal to 64. What is the value of a plus b? Let's write 64 in exponent form, which is 2 to the power of 6. So we can say 2 to the power of 3a into 2 to the power of 3b is equal to 2 to the power of 6. Uh, according to the law of exponents, we can bring that, make that simpler and say 3a plus 3b is equal to 6, taking only the exponents into consideration. All right, and then we have 3a plus 3b is equal to 6. We can divide by 3 here and 3 here. Since we're only trying to find a plus b, we can find that a plus b is equal to 2. And the answer is c, 2. In the xy plane, the center of a circle has coordinates negative 2 and 4. So here's the center of your circle. And one endpoint of a diameter of the circle is negative 2 and 1. That's one endpoint. 
and what are the coordinates of the other end point? Very simple. Let's look at this circle. Uh, you can see the distance from here to the end point is 4 minus 1. It is 3 units. So obviously this will be 3 units. So it would be 4 plus 3 up here. The x coordinate remains the same. The y coordinate changes to 7, which is 4 plus 3. So the coordinates of the other end point is negative 2 and 7. If 3n over 2p is equal to 4 over 3, what is the value of n over p? So let's just write that down. 3, we want only n over p. So we obviously multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 3 and 2 over 3. Cancels out and we are left with n over p is equal to 4 twos are 8. Three threes are nine. The answer is eight over nine. Here we're given a square, which is A, B, C, D, has nine equal squares, five of which have circles inscribed in them. If A, B is six, here's the main point. A, B is equal to six. One side is equal to six. The area of the square will be equal to 36. Okay, what is the total shaded area? So we have to obviously subtract the area of each circle in here. So based on this, we would see if one side is six, one third of it will be two. The radius of the circle will be one. Uh, area of a circle is pi r squared and the radius is equal to one. So area of each of these circles is equal to pi. There are five circles here. The area of the five circles is equal to 5 pi. So the area of the shaded area will be 36 minus 5 pi, which is d. In the xy plane, a line L passes through the point negative 1 and 3 and is parallel to the line 4x plus 2y is equal to k. If the same line passes through another point P and negative P, what is the value of P? Let's find out the slope of this line since parallel lines have the same slope. Y is equal to mx plus c plus k over 2. The slope is negative 2. And your line passes through the points negative 1 and 3 and other points P and negative P. We can have y is equal to mx plus c, we'll have to find the constant because we have these values with us right now. y is 3 is equal to negative 2 into negative 1 plus c and we get your constant will be equal to 1. Now you have your new x and y values as p and negative p. So let's place them into your formula. Negative p, that's y, is equal to mx. m is negative 2. x is p here. Plus c, c is 1. When you solve it, we get p is equal to 1. y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 3, y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. How many solutions are there to the system of the equations above? When you look at these two expressions, we see they're both equal to y. So both of them will be equal to each other, should be equal to negative 3x plus 5. And this simplifies to x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. And this factors to plus 2 x minus 1 is equal to 0 so the possible values of x are 1 and negative 2 there's two solutions to the system of equations and your possible answer is d find the smallest even number that is divisible by 3 5 and 7 Obviously, over here, we would think of a number of 3 multiplied by 5 and multiplied by 7 and get your answer. But you tend to forget the word even. That means it has to be divisible by 2, 2. And when you multiply this, you get 210. Current fraction is equivalent to 2 over 3. If the fraction's denominator is 2 less than twice its numerator, find the denominator of the fraction. Now, let's understand what we're given. Some fraction is equivalent to 2 over 3, 
and the denominator is 12 less than twice the numerator. Let the numerator be n. That's twice the numerator minus 12 will give you the denominator. So that gives you something simple to solve, which is n over 2n minus 12 is equal to 2 over 3. This gives me 3n is equal to 4n minus 24, and therefore n will be equal to 24. Be careful, we asked what is the denominator. The denominator is actually 2n minus 12. So that's 2 into 24 minus 12. So n will be equal to 36. P is greater than 0 and P squared is equal to 3P plus 40. What is the value of P? Simple. Let's solve this equation. P squared is equal to 3P plus 40. Let's set this equal to 0. P squared minus 3P minus 40 is equal to 0. Let's factor this out. We get P minus 8 and P plus 5 is equal to 0. So P has two possible values, which is a negative 5 and 8. But remember, P is greater than 0. So negative 5 is, does not qualify and P will be equal to 8. If x squared minus 3x is equal to 50 and x squared plus 5x is equal to 12, what is the value of x squared plus x? Okay, let's write down these two equations. x squared plus 5x is equal to 12. An easy way to solve this is by adding them first. And we get 2x squared plus 2x is equal to 62. Divide both sides by 2. We get x squared plus x is equal to 31. And you're done. That was so simple. x, y is equal to 120 and 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to 1 over 4. Find x plus y. Now we have given your x, y is equal to 120. Let's try to make these denominators x, y, make a common denominator x, y, all right? 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to 1 over 4. We can make this denominator x, y by multiplying by y over y. And here multiplying by x over x. And we are left with y plus x over x, y is equal to 1 over 4. We know x, y is 120. So y plus x over 120 is equal to 1 over. So y plus x will be equal to 120 over 4, which is 30. Basically, x plus y is equal to 30.